Two thumbs up for a sweep. Blue Jays take down the Red Sox in the best series of the season, at least in my opinion. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, man. Uh, whenever you vanquish the Red Sox into baseball hell, it's a lot of fun. Bang. Gone. Xander's last week. Maybe. But it's not our last week. We're back doing live shows after a weird week of some pre-recorded shows. And we got, he was a Blue Jay coming up. I'm going to embarrass myself again, uh, as well as a St. Louis series coming up starting on Tuesday that we're going to preview a little bit. So it's Locked on Blue Jays. And it starts right now. You are Locked on Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Blue Jays. Thanks so much for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. He's Matt Bonaparte. I'm Ben Shulman. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, Odyssey, Twitter at Locked On Jays, Gmail, Locked On Blue Jays, real R E A L at gmail.com. Com, and you can also reach out to our personal Twitters if you'd like, which if you're a YouTube viewer, it's right there. And then I'm pretending to reach into Matt's box where it's right there as well. Um, but yeah, check us out on YouTube. YouTube subscriber check-in. YouTube subscriber check-in. What do we got? 122 on the road to a million. 122 on the road to 400 million. Watch out, yeah. cutie. Oh, yeah. um, okay. Blue Jays uh, win. The series, they win the final game 8-4. to four. We are recording on Sunday, but we're doing our uh, our standard series recap. Before we get into that, I should let you know this episode is brought to you by Blue Nile. Make your moments sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And going on now is the Blue Nile anniversary sale. It's Bones in My Anniversary. Save up to 40% on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25% on engagement ring settings. Shop stress-free and find your forever piece. Go to BlueNile.com today. Bang. Um, okay, Blue Jays sweep. Sweep the Red Sox. Bones, what's your storyline? Storyline is, like I said just a couple of minutes ago, uh, the Blue Jays have successfully vanquished the Red Sox forever and started a new curse. Jaron Duran, uh, you will be the face of a new curse, my friend. Um, that 28-5 to game cemented a legacy Jaron Duran might never play in the major leagues ever again after the season. I mean, oh. that was incredible. As a person Bronx who despises Bones, the dude. Red Sox, I was elated when I saw that play. Elated. I've never been that happy watching baseball. Uh, Bronx Except Bones is on full display, by the way. Uh, just I, Listen, like... I'll, I'll never hide my hatred for that team. I despise that team. And the Red Sox, I mean, the Blue Jays went out, took them in town. I'm happy about it. Yeah. They did. Um, I, you know, I was doing a game during the the twenty eight to five game, and it literally felt like like I would go check in between half innings, which in the minors go a lot quicker than the majors, um, on the score, and it felt like they literally scored a touchdown every single time I turned back to that game. I was like, oh, they're up six nothing. I turned back. It was like, whoa, it's eleven um, nothing. And then I turned back later, and it was like, it's twenty. They've scored twenty runs. Uh, so that's the most ridiculous game. I watched it all back, uh, that I've ever seen. Uh, my main storyline, this series, that game, but then this series in general, I feel like could be the start of something big. I know that they had some wins going into the break. Philly series, credit to them. That, that's a good two game sweep. Beating the Royals three out of four was fine. They kind of eked those out against a, a depleted Royals roster, but this is on the road. In Boston, yes, they have injuries, but that everyone has injuries at point different points in the year. There was no, like, we don't have all our players type of excuse. And they just pounded them, like, really controlled them uh, for all three games in this series. Scored a lot of early runs, which was, uh, you know, obviously a, a big key to it. So I feel like this could be, you know, this actual series could be the thing that springboards them into a huge run. And also my side storyline is, uh, speaking of the Philadelphia Phillies, the Boston Red Sox are awful at defense. Like, just – I mean, it wasn't just the Durant play. Like, they had a horrific defensive series. An absolutely awful in several different ways defensive series. They didn't look like a major league team. Nobody could play. I mean, they didn't even look – this is insane to me that this was a team 
that people were talking about like a month ago as, oh, got to watch out for the Sox. They're coming up on your heels, I mean, everybody. And they were. The and record. it's crazy that they are now just pitiful uh, and they're going to sell at the deadline. I mean, they kind of have to at this point. they got to save their bacon because they were thinking, all right, we're going to get one more year out of Bogarts maybe and then uh, see what we can do with Devers. And now they're going to have to just sell, sell, sell. So uh, I'm happy about it. I won't lie. I'm happy about it. Who's your MVP in the series? Uh, I'm going to go Rymel Tapia. Why not? I mean, someone's got to give him recognition. He didn't think that was a grand slam. I didn't think that was a grand slam. Nobody thought that was a grand slam. It's almost shameful calling it one. But in the scorecard, that's what it is. Uh, And not to mention, he had four RBIs a couple days later. So uh, pretty exciting stuff for Rymel. I'm happy for him because, uh, you know, maybe what if like after that game, after the series, he just turns into like Superman and he's just fantastic. And he's like, I just had 10 RBIs against the Red Sox six, you know, in the first game, maybe four of those weren't warranted, but Hey, uh, I got him. So Ryan Maltapi has got to be my MVP. I mean, he had a good series. Like I, I told you before, like obviously four of those, and you just said four of those RBIs are lucky. And, and I do somewhat think that like Rymel just, kind of finds a way to sneak ground balls through in a way that I've almost not thing. seen anyone else do. I know, but it's like it defies logic because you don't aim in baseball. You just kind of hit it, you know, yeah. unless like they're really shifted and you're really slicing. But I, I went to look at it because Rymel's numbers have jumped like crazy. Um, since the 10th, which is only six games, can I get a better sample size for Rymel? Yeah, this is a little better. Last 11 games, maybe I can get it to 10. Last 10 games for Rymel Tapia. He's batting 471 with a 1236 OPS. Um, in those 10 games, he has five extra base hits, 16 hits total, and 14 RBS. He's, he's a man. He's playing better. He is uh if if we up we will at some point update our uh off-season moves grades and maybe even throw in mid-season moves grades if they do something crazy. Um like Rymel is gonna get a big bump. Uh, up the up the list in terms of his GPA from what it has been for the first couple checks because uh, he's been really good so far. He's been the man. Um, give me your MVP. Of, uh, speaking of offseason moves, yeah. My guy, Matt Chapman. Uh, I believe I picked him as my hype train. It's a while back now, so I don't 100% remember. If I'm wrong, comment and be like, Ben, you're stupid. You're wrong. Why are you hosting this podcast? Get away from me. Um, but – Matt Chapman, you know, had a really strong series once again. He's another guy who over the last couple of weeks has been really strong. And Chapman, uh, you know, went six for 13 in this series. It's 462 average, three extra base hits, four RBIs, uh, you know, had this the third highest OPS behind Tapia and Teoscar Hernandez. Um, Mateo got, you know, one or two lucky base hits. For Chapman, it's really just kind of the evening out now of like, Guy hits ball really hard for a while, doesn't get results. Uh, now he's getting results. So I can probably give you a last 10 games, Matt Chapman, just to to give you a similar thing to Tapia. It's not quite Tapia numbers, but last 10 games, Chapman is 342 average, seven extra base hits, nine RBIs, 1.103 OPS. So that's pretty, that's pretty solid. darn good. He's raised it up, and you got to be happy about that. <clears throat> we got the- I'll give the people the season numbers and then I'll read them uh, the advertisement they so desperately want. Um, but Matt Chapman, Matt Chapman is up to a 745 OPS, which I, not everyone agrees with me. But if he ended the season with that, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate it at all. Uh, That's all okay. Needs. Yeah, it's good defense, right? Uh, and all I need is one win, and he was a Blue Jay to not be ashamed of myself. But before we do that. I got to tell you about Blue Nile, your one-stop shop for fine jewelry and wedding jewelry. Blue Nile is a place with simple online tools that lets you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as the setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft your partner's perfect engagement ring. Each ring is one of a kind. And if you're looking for fine jewelry, but you're having trouble choosing, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7, available via phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget. 
Make your moments sparkle with jewelry from Blue Nile. And going on now is the Blue Nile anniversary sale. Save up to 40% on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25% on engagement ring settings. Plus, every order is insured. It ships free. It arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever piece. Go to BlueNile.com today. All right, Ben. This is this is episode number two uh, in season four of He Was a Blue Jay. If you are not, if you're maybe you took a, a month off from the pod and you're back, uh, Ben, he was the question master for three seasons. We got a uh, request from our email list, and you should email us at lockdownbluejaysreal at gmail.com. There it is if you need it. Uh, double time. <clears throat> that said, maybe Bones should take a try at doing that. They should switch spots, see how well Ben can do in the game. Uh, game one, Ben lost to Dwayne Wise. Um, it was a miss. He's 0-1 in his first ever season, and that's okay. But I need you to know that you got a big brain in that cranium of yours, uh, and you got to have confidence in yourself or you're never going to win this game. So you know, here we go, Ben. Down. I, I kind of need to see the ball go through the net. I'm hoping it, it you're gonna happens. You're going to be fine here, kid. Are you ready? I am. And for people who don't know the game, which is a very small amount of you at this point, uh, I give Ben five hints to guess a player who was a Blue Jay for a very brief stint uh, or somebody you just forgot was a Blue Jay. Uh, and then he tries to guess who it is. Here we go. This catcher debuted at 30 years old in 2010. This catcher debuted at 30 years old. Debuted at 30 years old in 2010. I didn't say with the Blue Jays. Um, I mean, I know it's uh, he, well, JP Aaron CBS just far too obvious of a Blue Jay anyway. So, uh, Jeff Mathis. Not Jeff Mathis. You got two more guesses if you want, or we could move on. Um, I know it's not going to be those guys, these guys, but Jose Molina. Nope. Um, John Buck. Not John Buck. Let me move on. Okay. He played for nine different teams over his career and retired at 40 years old following the 2020 season. Played for nine different <laughs> Darn it. Um, we've already done Salta Lamacchia, so I'm not guessing him. Um, and he wouldn't have debuted then. Um, I don't think Mike Na – this isn't a guess because Mike Napoli didn't technically play for the Blue Jays, although he was a part of their organization for a brief period of time. Um, played for nine different teams until 2020. So, like, I absolutely know who he is. You know, he debuted in 2010 and played to 2020. Blue Jays catchers. Blue Jays catchers. Who are the rando catchers? All right, let's move on. Okay. His stint with the Blue Jays was 34 games long, and the Jays were one of two teams he played for that season. <laughs> you didn't even give me the year. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll give you the year. No, 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 no. no. Okay. All right, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Uh, but it just it made player. me sad. It's all that hint did. I was like, oh, no. no. It's a 34-game Blue Jay career. Uh, and honestly, that wasn't much of a hint. I'm still learning here in my in my question master phase. I feel like I should give you the year. Uh, the year was 2014. 2000. Okay, so this was right before they got good. Um, it's a 2014 catcher who played 34 games, and he must have been notable somewhere for me to know who he is. You know, um, you definitely oh. know who he is. I'd be shocked if you didn't know who this was. Yeah. Well, the sad thing about me not feeling confident in this game is I'm actually like trivia is one of the spheres I usually feel the most confident in. So uh, this game is just I don't know. How can you count? I feel on the other side too much. It's in my head. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know this guy didn't play for the Blue Jays. Like Wilson Ramos. It ain't Wilson Ramos. Um, oh, mm, no, it's not. It's not Jan Gomes. Um, catcher, catcher, 34 games in 2014, 
Who are the pitchers? Does anyone have a personal? Oh, but he played for someone else that year, so we traded him away. Yeah, it's a for time here, Ben. Okay, you can move on. Okay. Fourth hint is that he's an American-born player, and he's got a big, bald head. <laughs> I want to say John Buck again, but I'm not going to. Uh... <laughs> I'll recount the hints while Ben thinks here. This catcher debuted at 30 years old in 2010. He played for nine different teams over his career and retired at 40 years old following the 2020 season. His stint with the Blue Jays was 34 games long, and the Jays were one of the two teams he played for in 2014, and he's got a big, bald American head. He's got the flag painted right on it. Uh, <laughs> bald guy. Bald American guy. Bald American guy uh, who played in 2014. I'm, I want to guess we would have traded him to someone pretty good, right? That's probably what makes sense. Although I think we were all right in 2014. Um, but you did not, trade him to somebody good. I'll give you that. You did? We did? Yes, he traded him to a very good team. Uh, did we trade him to the Giants? Probably not. Um, did we trade him? The Yankees weren't that good that year. We wouldn't have traded to them anyway. Um, did we trade him to like the, I got like a weird, like Oakland A's feeling or something going on. Um, bald catcher, 2010 American played for us in 2014. Give me hit number five and then, and then we'll see what happens. Hint number five. And this is either going to be like, you get it or you're a lost cause. Last week, I, I missed on one I absolutely should have just clicked. He is arguably most notable for his time when he played for the Yankees, which he was known for acting as a mentor for Hispanic pitchers, most notably Davey Garcia. Mm, we didn't have Francisco Cervelli. <laughs> it's not him. Francisco Cervelli, not American-born, yeah. nor bald. That's fair. Yeah, nor bald. That's tough for me making Francisco a bald American when he's so much more interesting than just that. Um, the Italian right there. Love that guy. Yeah, so that's not – that. that's definitely not clicking with me. But I am going to think of the times if he was working with Davey and some other people. Um, you know, if Jay he Bruce was – in a press conference talking about Davey Garcia. <laughs> this would be the perfect time to be a Yankee fan. Um, I'll also give you the. I'll give you a bonus hint that you don't, want to, you don't want to. Well, I think it's an interesting fold, and it, I don't okay. think it's going to help you either. So I just want to say, it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, it might help. So in the trade in 2014, he was traded with Liam Hendricks to the Kansas City Royals for Danny Valencia. We traded Liam Hendricks to the Kansas City Royals? With this guy for Danny Valencia. You lost that trade bad. I'm not going to lie to you. Danny V was decent. Um, Liam Hendricks. Well, Liam Hendricks wasn't Liam Hendricks on that Kansas City team, I can tell you that. He wouldn't become Liam Hendricks for like three more years. Um, this catcher was probably just as big of a piece as Liam was. He was like back of our bullpen. Or like front of our bullpen. You know what I mean? Um and I think Casey just lost him. I don't think they they traded him or anything. But um, went we back, turned, Liam Hendricks went back to Toronto the next season. Yeah. See, we didn't. We won. It was, sure. it was like Batman, um, but cool in Australia. Um, you just got Liam to Hendricks, our names. Oh, I know, but I don't like. I know which names it's not. This is my issue. It's like I could I could say names to you. Like I could yell Rod Barajas, but I know it's not him. You know, like <laughs> so I just. Kansas City, who would have been the backup catcher to Salvador Perez in the 2014 run? I was honestly uh, really hoping you were going to get it on the Davey Garcia thing. I thought you were going to get that. If any Blue Jay fan knows what that is, please comment below. <laughs> it was like a baseball story, so I just thought you – Davey Garcia, play. I don't care about Davey Garcia. How many games is But it wasn't – that wasn't what it was about. It was like that he was – like he was a mentor for Hispanic players. Oh. Well, that's nice. Baseball brings communities together. Um, 
I'm going to be bad at this game. I hate it. <laughs> you one final guess here, Ben. I hate it, but I have nothing in my brain. Uh, <laughs> he retired in 2020. He was a Blue Jay in 2014, a Kansas City Royal in 2014 as well. Um, he was traded with – I feel like I can picture who was traded with Liam Hendricks, but I can't. Uh, I know this isn't him, but I'm going to say Gerald Laird. I Gerald like Laird, Jim. fun guy. The answer was Eric Kratz. Oh, I wasn't going to get Eric Kratz. <laughs> no way. <laughs> and that was the hard one. So uh, yeah, we got two out of the way yeah. here. Uh, All right. Well, hey. You started I do know. Two, but so did uh, some teams in which they won the finals in game six. So I have faith in you. Um, uh-huh. If you want to bet on Ben the next time we play this game, you shouldn't. And you can't do it at betonline.net. But what you can do is go to the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs, find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. BetOnline, where the game starts. You vibing, huh? Yeah, I am vibing a little. You got to dance through the pain of losing. Um... But the Blue Jays don't uh, because they're killing it. Streaky as, uh, you know, thing that's streaky. But uh, the Blue Jays have won a bunch of games, and now they do get a day off, uh, you know, on this Monday. But then they're starting the St. Louis series the next day. Uh, So it's time for our scaries and our hype trains. Uh, Everyone has seen the news about Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado, uh, and we've had this conversation, like, 12 times, so I don't think we need to. Um, but, yeah, they want to have Arenado and Goldschmidt. So if you're wondering, hey, why didn't you make Arenado or Goldschmidt your uh, scary? That's why, and that's why we're not making Austin Romine or scary either. Bones, who is your scary? My scary is the machine, Albert Pujols, who's probably like 75 years old in actuality. Um he kind of rakes against the Jays. He hits 310 on the career in 28 games, uh, an 877 OPS, six homers, 18 RBI. Uh, the man, he's still chugging along here uh, at whatever age they say he is, 42, 43? He's 42. Yeah. Um, 42. So, Albert, he's going out there every day, uh, and he's hitting tanks. I don't know what he is in terms of in the eyes of a, a – Cardinals fan, but he's hitting 221 on the season. He has six home runs, so it's not like he's done nothing, but he ain't good, but I think that he does hit a home run. That's my prediction. He hits a home run in the series, because they're going to need him to play at least DH, because someone's going to have to play first and third. Yeah, I mean, tradition. If, if everyone's there, I actually am not sure if he ends up playing, just because He's really uh, kind of just like a lefties platoon guy these days. So his numbers against lefties are still uh, very solid. But, yeah, I mean, I do think Cardinals fans, I don't know. I don't want to speak for them. Um, I'd be lying if I told you I was an everyday locked-on Cardinals listener. But um, I do believe Cardinals fans are pretty stoked about him being back. You know, like it still is like their guy even though he's just their old guy now. He's kind of all – he's putting up money in the bank for them, you know? Um, yeah. My scary uh, is going to be another man whose numbers aren't that good this year, uh, but I'm banking a little bit on last year. Uh, it's Tyler O'Neill's first trip to Canada, a lumberjack man from Burnaby, B.C., uh, who had a 9-10 OPS last year, is, is huge, um, meat, lots of it. Uh, hitting over 400 with an over 1,000 OPS in his last seven games. He's been injured this year. Uh, he hasn't hit well. Uh, the OPS is 610 this year. There's no way around that. Uh, but he's going to hit closer to the middle of the order, provided uh, he plays both games. And if they're going to get some big homers, uh, it might be that dude come into the Rogers Center for the first time. So I'm excited to see uh, Tyler O'Neill on Canadian soil. But I'm more excited to see the Blue Jays 
Uh, by the way, I just went to confirm it on your Albert Pujols pick because I think I said this to you off air, but not on air. But um, Pujols obviously played against the Blue Jays mostly when he was with the Angels, uh, not when he was with the Cardinals originally. Um, and he did hit his first ever Angels home run against the Blue Jays. Uh, I was at my friend Noah Titleman's house, also known as Snowy. Um, and I watched uh, Albert Pujols hit a home run. That was in Anaheim, to be fair, but it was against the Blue Jays uh, on May 6th, 2012. So that's all I got there. Who's your hype train? My train that you shall aboard uh, for potential hype um, is going to be right off the cuff here. Okay. Because okay. I was really indecisive when making this pick. I went through a bunch of guys. And at the end of the day, you know who I'm going to pick here? You know who I'm going to pick, Ben? Who? Take a guess. Take a guess who I'm going to pick. I think you are going to pick Teoscar Hernandez. Well, I picked Teoscar Hernandez last time, so oh, pick again. I guess again. Yeah. Um, I think you are going to pick Santiago Esteban. Wrong! Bo Bichette is okay. my hype train because the man has been letting me down this season. But, you know, he does a couple of things. You know what he does? He leads Was the good? major leagues in at-bats. He leads the AL in games played. This is a guy that goes out there and he plays, okay? He is a professional baseball player, and he chooses this as a 9-to-5 job, okay? He goes out there. He doesn't whine about load management. Bo Bichette goes out there and he plays, okay? And he's going to do that against these Cardinals. And and people are going to talk about, hey, man, his numbers are down. Yeah, they are down, okay? He led the AL in hits last year. That was never going to happen again this season, maybe next year, but not this year. Bo Bichette going to go out there. I bet you it's a tank. All right, I like it. Uh, two games set, that's a little bit of a bet from you, so I'm in on it. Uh, I'm going to go with a man who starred in the last two games set against St. Louis in St. Louis before he got injured for, like, the fourth time this season, but he's back now. It's Danny Jansen. Uh, Danny Jansen, or, well, let's go back. For everyone who was listening to our all-star uh, second half over-unders, I love you, Bones, but Danny Jansen needs to hit one more home run for your do six guys. It was guys a bad line. Run. Hey, hey. You go, you look back at those lines and you say, that was a bad line. And, you know, that's why I'm not an odds maker. End of the day, I'm not. Yeah, it's a bad line. Uh, <laughs> say Oscar Hernandez passed it when I'm wrong. Um, and then Danny Jansen has nine homers this year. He's, like, almost kept up that early season pace of how much he was just knocking the ball out of the park. It's obviously a limited sample size. He is slugging 644 this year. And he had a two-homer game in his lone game against St. Louis. Um, that was the 8-1 win that started the eight-game win streak for the Blue Jays, including the Anaheim sweep in May. So uh, I like Danny to, you know, see red once he sees those red jerseys once again. Um, I'm going to tell the Cardinals they're not allowed to wear their alternate baby blues in Toronto because I think that's rude. Um, yeah, that's against the rules. Well, there was so it's not against the rules because it's also their color, but there was the one day where the Kansas City Royals wore their baby blues and the Blue Jays wore red. And I was like, what am I watching? I hate <laughs> just those rules, dude. Um, I, hate them. I, I, just, I just didn't understand it. But I got Danny Jansen as my hype train. And you know who else is hype? You know who we've both been saying is the, the hypest guy on the planet pretty recently, Bones? Who? Who are we saying? MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan. Oh, yeah. You should make your second listen on the Locked On MLB pro podcast. Sully brings – Humor. PFS brings passion. PF Changs brings unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Follow the number one daily league wide podcast, Locked on MLB, with Paul Francis Sullivan on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. He's my bone apart. I'm Ben Shulman. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll catch you later.